Hello, and welcome to episode 169 of the Casual Try Hard Podcast. I'm Brian. Nice. I'm James. Nice. Podcast name. Nice. Nice. Done. <laughs> um, and this week we're coming to your ears, hopefully earlier than normal, uh, with our mechanics um, episode slash, um, you know, kind of how to look at preview season. Yeah, we're going to push this one out a little early. Normally our episodes come out uh, like Thursday-ish. Um, we're going to try and get this one up on Tuesday because the I think I want to change the way we do these a little bit. If we talk about the mechanics, a lot of times we just kind of do an episode about the mechanics and then move on. And then a couple weeks later we do our set review episode and like some of the mechanics stuff either people miss or forget about or whatever. So I kind of want to use the mechanics as a way to like get people engaged with spoiler season. So I think we're going to talk about the mechanics a little bit and then like the sorts of things that we're looking for out of those mechanics during spoiler season. And we kind of already have an example of what we're talking about today. So hopefully it's a decent episode and you guys enjoy it. Yeah. So if you want to get at us on social media, all of our links are in the description so you can find it all there. Yeah, get at us. Let us know if you like this format or not. Um, also, don't forget about our TCG player affiliate link, uh, tcg.casualtryhardmtg.com. Follow that link and help support the show. Anything you purchase, we'll get a percentage of to help keep the show afloat. Um, if you want to support us a little bit more directly, you can head over to patreon.com slash casualtryhardmtg. Patrons get access to our show notes. They get access to our pre-show kind of just us you know catching up talking about our lives talking about magic talking about you know behind the scenes podcast stuff it's just more us if you like us you get more of us it's about an hour every week um and patrons also get put on my mailing list every couple months i send something out to our patrons just kind of as a token of appreciation um just want to let everybody know at some point we probably are going to redo our patreon tiers to incorporate incorporate that's, That's not, a word. It is now. We're going to incorporate um, our tournaments into our Patreon um, eventually. Not right away, but I'd like to start giving away some bigger prizes, maybe some some sweet play mats. I've been messing around, you know, making some play mats over the last few months, and I'd like to get some printed and give them out to pay or not patrons, but uh, the tournament winners. So all that stuff costs money. So I think yeah. at some point we'd like to start charging an entry fee and send out some play mats to the tournament winners so keep an eye on that as well um speaking of our tournament how did our tournament go pretty good you can watch my side of it on youtube.com casual tryhard mtg nice i posted um my matches i did a quick deck tech mm -hmm. and then uh, my matches it was it was fun yeah. i think everyone had a good time yep it was nice playing for even like marginal non-ladder <laughs> stakes yeah basically just breaking rights yeah that third what what yeah um but no it was good i think everyone had a good time uh mtg melee was at least on our uh, as a player it was pretty easy to use mm -hmm. uh the only the only issue was uh arena would not let us direct challenge in yeah. my last round so that wasn't uh, Melee's fault. Yep. I mean, uh, we should, Wizards uh... is is an indie startup. So <laughs> small, tiny, little budget, right? Whatever, yeah. whatever Chad Chad gives out. Whatever he gives, gives them out, yeah. We should it's, it's, uh, uh, say thank you. Cases... Or... Go ahead. Oh, God. I say it's two cases of code red. Yeah, there you go. And a Taco Bell gift card. That's all the programmers get. <laughs> we should uh, congratulate the winner, right? Yeah. It was, uh, hang on, let me get the name right. It was Bubblex. Congratulations, Bubblex. You took the tourney down. Yeah, uh, Bubblex's deck was very good. I uh, immediately tried to build it because it was doing what, <laughs> uh, it was, he posted his deck up in the Discord, but it was doing what um, I uh, kind of wanted to do, mm -hmm. but better. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was very good. I think my commentary was, well, can never beat that card. <laughs> well, can never win. There was a lot of that. So, yeah, it was, it was, it was a, a good, good event, though. Like I said, it, 
it seemed like everybody had a good time. We're planning on doing another one. It'll be next month sometime. We uh, talked about it a little bit in the pre-show, but I think we still got a couple couple details to iron out, and then we'll start posting about it probably next week. So stay tuned yeah, for that. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, it, it don't let MTG melee like intimidate you. It was pretty easy mm-hmm. to to set up, so not a big deal. And it was nice to have uh, people in the Discord, mm-hmm. right, to be able to chat with and kind of see what was going on. Yeah, it kind of gave um, you like the whole tournament vibe thing, where you know yeah. between rounds you you know head outside and talk with your buddies for a little bit and. It was kind of nice. Like, I wasn't playing in the tournament. I was just running it. But it was kind of nice to, like, see everybody, like, go quiet for a little while while they were playing their rounds and then, like, start trickling back into chat. It was cool. And, and even if you're not uh, in the Discord, which, why aren't you? Uh, there is, like, a chat feature that pops up when you get paired with someone in oh. MTG Melee. Cool. So if you have to, like, in my last round, you, you'll watch... Uh, we couldn't get it to pair. Mm-hmm. Then when we finally got it to pair, me being a pro gamer, paired the wrong uh, type of uh, event. Mm. So then it had to be like, what happened? Like we could like you could like talk through stuff. We did it all in Discord, but you could still do it in Melee if you wanted. Yeah. But no, it was it was good. It was good, and it was like around two hours, maybe less. Yeah, the rounds seemed to go pretty quick. I was a little bit nervous about that plan you know, like a powered down format. I was a little nervous about rounds going long, but no, everything seemed to go by pretty quickly. These are, these are 2022 commons. That's true. <laughs> they're, they're basically uncommons. Yeah. So it's fine. They're what used to be uncommons. Exactly. They're, they're uh 2017 uncommons. Yeah. All right. So for this show, we wanted to go through streets of new Capenna and talk about each uh shard right they're yeah, shards they're, right? they are yes. shards yep there are shards and um talk about their mechanics and then what would what we're on the lookout for during spoiler season mm-hmm. uh what we want to see from cards that might might end up being powerful yeah so the first one we have is obscura which is the esper shard it's a white, blue, black for those that aren't into the lingo. And the mechanic for the Obscura family is connive. Um, once the, whatever connive condition is met, sometimes it's ETB. It does. I don't think it always has to be ETB, though. Um, there's some that are on attack. Yeah, there's a couple that are. I think there was one spoiled today that's just like three mana connive. Um, so yeah. when you connive, you loot. So you draw a card, then discard a card. And if you discard a non-land card, so basically any spell, uh, you put a plus one, plus one counter on the creature that connived. Mm-hmm. Um, mechanic's pretty straightforward. I don't think there's really a whole lot to delve into. Um, is there anything that this mechanic reminds you of? Um, I don't know if it reminds me of anything in particular. Particular. Are there any like play patterns that would be familiar, or it, it's like things that to... we can compare it to? Hmm. I don't know. What What are you thinking? Because I don't have anything that's popping into my head. Well, like I I thought that Connive um will probably end up playing kind of similar to Explore. Okay. Where it gives you some sort of card selection. Um, like explore let you draw a card if it was a land where this doesn't ever let you draw a card um, or it doesn't let you be up a card I should say um, but they both give you some sort of card selection and they both make the creature bigger mm-hmm. so it's and I think explore played mainly because of wild growth walker but I think explore mm-hmm. played better than like people were expecting it to yeah um I think explore is a reasonable comparison. Uh, I guess there's there's cards that kind of are similar to some of the explore cards, like mm-hmm. almost the same kind of templating. Yeah. Um, I don't. I, I think I would rather loot than explore. Mm-hmm. There's more things you can do with looting. 
Yeah, like looting is super duper powerful. Yeah. Right. So, and it like forces you to loot. Mm -hmm. Right. Great. It's not like a a may. It's like, no, you have to. And like that's. I mean, is there ever mm -hmm. a situation where you wouldn't loot though? Oh, that's, that's what I was going to say. Like you always loot. Yeah. But, um, uh, some people don't, right? There's like a whole article that LSV wrote about why you should always loot. Yeah, I don't know why you would ever decline to loot. Yeah, but people do, so, oh, and thus okay. articles have been written. Well, but none, yeah, none so of our like, listeners will. <laughs> no, no, they, they know. But, like, I feel like this, like, it's not like you, when the condition is met, you may loot. It's like, no, no, you loot. Yeah, you just do it. Yeah. Especially so, like when there's an upside of, you know, making your creature bigger. There's yeah. There's no reason I mean, to n- not do it. Yeah. In like constructed, like we have flashback cards. Mm-hmm. Right. So like if you if you discard a flashback card, you're kind of not discarding a card. Mm-hmm. Right? Like you're still getting access to that card at some point later in the game. Yep. So that is a uh, a good thing to keep in mind. Mm-hmm. Um and, like, these kind of things are often, like, way more powerful than you realize. Oh, yeah. They're more powerful than it will show up in your game of magic. Like, you won't even realize how powerful it is when you do the thing. Because, like, it helps smooth your hands out. And kind of does it without you knowing it. If that makes sense. Yeah. It smooths your hands out. And it just op- opens you up to... It lets you... It lets you play more games, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. Yeah, like, right? you, like you, if you, you keep a sketchy hand with a couple of knife cards and, like, you know, it works out for you. But you don't ever think back to that game, like, how it would have been without the knife because that's not how the game played out. So, like, in your head when you're, you know, trying to figure out, should I include this card or not, like... You're you don't really get the reinforcement of the connive helping you because like you just kind of played your game of magic. Yeah, yeah, but like like you said, if you were gonna miss your third land drop, mm-hmm. and you connived and got to hit your third land drop, like that's a game you got to participate in, right? For multiple turns, as opposed to being a game that you just lost, right? So that's the mechanic. Mm-hmm. What are we looking for in terms of this mechanic for constructed? Obviously, anytime we're looking for something for constructed, we need it to be costed efficiently. So we're looking for yes. these cards to be cheap. We're probably not looking for five or six mana connive cards. Those are probably going to be like limited only stuff if they even go mm-hmm. that high. I don't know what kind, how good the card would have to be for it to be a connive card at six mana, but. Um, they need to be cheap and Mm -hmm. then they also need to be useful in their colors, which I think is kind of important here because connive is like we said, it's a very powerful ability that these colors don't always have access to. Um, so black cards that let you like self discard aren't super, I mean, they exist, but they're not super common, right? Like black, black doesn't get looting. Yeah, they they black is discarding as a cost. Right. But not looting. Right. Um, um and then blue gets looting all the time. Mm-hmm. So Knive is probably less interesting in blue because and there's less so much like, competition for, for that yeah, effect. Right, like there's any like you know, there's any number of things at two and three mana that loot or do something similar to loot in blue. Yeah, I mean, there's probably no better looter than, like, Jace Friend's Prodigy, right? Yeah, but I mean, even, you know, stuff like uh, Charter Course. Mm-hmm. Or, what do we have, like, Thirst for Knowledge, Thirst for Meaning. Yep. Right, like, those are, like, that effect is pretty common in blue. Mm-hmm. Right, so, a card... A connive card that, um, like, kind of makes its way into blue, uh, like, into constructed for for blue, right, is cheap. But this is another thing to think about with cost is, is the connive 
isn't accounted for in the mana cost. Yeah, like so, it's just kind of tacked onto a card. Yeah, so remember when we were talking about, like, Decayed Zombies? Yeah. And we were like, oh, all of these cards with the Decayed Zombies have the exact same mana cost if they didn't have Decayed. Right. Right? And it was like, oh, like, in Limited, like, it was a huge problem. Mm -hmm. Right? If there are blue connive cards that, like, oh, I'm a Wind Drake, but I also connive when I attack. Yeah, that's a huge deal. Right? That's, that's a huge deal. Uh, right, basically, it's like uh, your looter scooter, mm -hmm. right? Like that's that's a huge deal. Or, you know, I'm a one man. I'm a flying man that connives when I enter the battlefield. Also a huge Great. deal. Also a huge deal. Right. So cards that are like at rate, but have the ability on them, mm -hmm. uh, go like way up in value. And then white. What about white? We said that uh, obscure is an Esper shard, so we got blue, black, and white. Uh, this is not something that white gets to do, right? Basically like, ever. ever. Yeah. Only uh, only within the last year or so, white has gotten to like actually draw cards. And... So I did. I did one of my um, <clears throat> uh, favorite searches on a gatherer mm -hmm. and that is uh for just uh not gather in scryfall so i just did the oracle text for white of draw discard mm -hmm. uh yeah there aren't any until now i uh i guess i guess there's wandering champion i don't uh, know that card it is oh oh it's from fate reforged Okay. And it is a two mana three one. If you control a red or blue permanent, if it deals damage to uh, a player, you can draw a card. You can discard a card, then draw a card. Hmm. So it's not even loot. Yeah, it's rummage. It's rummage. But uh, um, but yeah, there's not this effect in white. Yeah. Now, now, granted, uh, my what's it called? Uh. My search should bring up the connive cards, but it's uh, it's not something that happens a lot. So it's way more valuable in white mm -hmm. because it um, is a new effect. Yeah. So just today, um, actually, I don't don't think it was long before we started recording. We got a card called Rafine's Informant. It's one in a white for a two one human wizard, and when it enters the battlefield, it connives. So a pretty good like comparison for this card is just Merfolk Branchwalker, I think. It's a two mana two one that, you know, does the thing. We kind of already said that you might be able to think about connive kind of like we thought about Explore. Um, this is basically white Merfolk Branchwalker. But like we said, um white doesn't ever get to draw cards, it doesn't ever get to discard cards, and you get to do both of those things while potentially making you know, this a reasonable threat. White also doesn't get two mana three twos. It gets two mana three ones that die to everything. Yeah. So um also like this is kind of Professor of Symbology. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, it's not letting you draw a card, right? It's not letting you learn. But, you know, if it, it can turn a bad card into a good card mm -hmm. or a land into something, and that is just as valuable yeah. almost as as learning yep right because think of, like you would if you had a rafine's informant like in four lands in your opening hand right and two other cards mm -hmm. you would keep that hand yep right where if it was just a two mana three one you, you might not, not keep, that, keep that four land hand right right because this is like, oh, I don't need my fourth land. I can get rid of it and turn it into something else. Yep. Or, you know, I need my fourth land, but if I draw my fifth land in like my first two, one or two draw steps, yeah, I can ditch it for Rafine's Informant whenever I draw. And it's not rummage; like you get to see what you draw, mm -hmm. so you get to like have all the information when you make your decision. Right. And this also, um, we were talking about how like, you know, the black cards you know, could 
um, support like a madness style archetype, right? Well, Where you're like, we didn't oh. actually talk about that. Oh, we didn't yet. get to that. Well, okay. yeah, we kind of skipped over it. Um, but let's talk about it now. So we talked about what kinds of cards we're looking for, like what kinds of shells are these cards going to go into? So like the black cards are going to traditionally go into reanimator type things mm -hmm. or uh, madness stuff, right? Yeah. Where you're going to get paid off for discarding. Right. Um, blue cards kind of the same places. Yeah, but usually more like combo slanted. You're looking to yeah. you know put specific pieces of cardboard in specific places. Mm -hmm. And Rafine's Informant, like, it's a new card. Yeah. So, or a new thing that white can do. So it's going to be, it's going to find its way into a lot of places because it's the only option. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were talking beforehand, like, I've been playing Esper Reanimator in Standard. Mm -hmm. Right? Not Esper, I'm sorry. Uh, Grixis. Grixis. And uh, I also have an Esper build of the deck. But it's, like, missing some of the, like, impactful red cards. Well, Rafine's Informant, you know, can take the spot of some of those red cards that, I, that in, like, the Esper shell. Mm -hmm. Where it can be the early discard, plus it can be the speed bump that you need to, like, hold the ground against an aggro deck. Yeah, I mean, you can also think about some of the, like, reanimator cards that we've gotten lately. Like, if you think back to Modern Horizons 2... We got the um, that two mana that like comes reanimates something and then it comes back and reanimates it again. Oh, the oh gosh, what is it called? The creature? Yeah, yeah. Priest of Fell uh, Rights, or is that what yes, it is? Yes, that's it. Um, and we have persist. Yeah. And uh, late for dinner is like the white four mana reanimation spell. Yep. Um. So that's kind of like pushing, you know. A, white black archetype where you know maybe something i'm not necessarily saying that rafine's informant is going to be modern playable but it definitely supports an archetype that like doesn't exist or like having that effect in a color that wouldn't normally have it kind of opens up new doors for some exploring to begin yeah so like a card like this is super interesting mm -hmm. so looking for those cheap things that like and like I said, a two mana two one is a fine card. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not great, but a two mana three two is probably a decent card. Like that's that's above rate, and yeah. you're also putting a piece of cardboard somewhere where hopefully you can use it. Yeah, that is uh, modern magic is just shuffling cardboard around, mm -hmm. right? And this lets you shuffle. Yep. So, but what I mean by it, like. A like, uh, like again, professor of symbology. Mm -hmm. Two mana, two one is fine. It trades with a one or a two drop, yeah, and then gives you some additional value, yeah. And like that's all you need to take a card to like make it playable. Mm -hmm. So it is, um, it is an interesting card in that regard. Mm -hmm. But like, keep your eye out for, you know, we've kind of already seen with uh Rafine's informant but cards that don't fit the the normal color pie right like white is especially um uh n new uh especially gets this recently right with all their focus on like drawing cards in uh yeah uh white um so just keep that in mind yep we can we can find you can basically get new things to do because they decide to like change the color pie a little bit yep pushing it around a little bit yep so we got anything else right. to talk about with either obscura or connive like that pretty much I sums it up right don't think um though i will say that like it initially strikes me as and this is how my head works right it seems like a good limited mechanic mm -hmm. but there's gonna be but not like you're not gonna build like a connive deck in standard right right but no, like but i, I feel think like, like connive pieces will definitely be playable in places that's what i was gonna say like it's going to be like one of those support things yeah where it's going to prop up whatever uh multiple decks because it's doing something unique or 
I need to get cards in my graveyard for whatever reason. Yep. All right. Um, Next up. One more, I have okay. one more question. Okay, so one more question. Hit me. We just talked about how, you know, this may or may not be, you know, build a connive deck or whatever. Um, I know a lot of times when we talk about mechanics in specifically in limited, um, we'll talk about whether it's an aggressive mechanic or not. Is this mm -hmm. an aggressive mechanic, a controlling mechanic, something in the middle? It's it's hard. Yeah. Because right, the mythic is uh once you do attack. Mm -hmm. Right. Rafine, once you do attack. Yep. Um there's a lot of them that are like ETB can mm -hmm. I? There's like a five mana blue card, Rafine's informant, um the 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 rare is that um I feel like this is like this kind of mechanic typically lets you go long. Yeah. Because I agree. Right. You're gonna get more value out of it in the long game than if you end, end the game on turn five. Yeah. So like it is a longer game mechanic, but there are like, you know, if you have like Rafine in your deck, right? If you start on a Rafine, well then now you're, you know, incentivized to play like a tempo we uh, Esper kind of game where you're gonna like have a bunch of little flyers or evasive creatures. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, the commons and uncommons are more geared towards like I draw my Rafines Informant on turn eight and I kept a land in my hand and I get to turn that land into a spell and then cast another spell and now my uh, opponent is woefully behind. Right. Right. So. I think in general, this mechanic is not super aggressive. I agree. But, you know, there are some... And it's like, okay, the connive conditions are, like, all over the place. Yeah, they, they really are. Right? There's a rare that's, like, cast two spells. Mm -hmm. There is an uncommon that is target me with a spell. Mm -hmm. There are a common and an uncommon... And a ATV. rare, and uh, oh, there's th two rares and yeah, two, a common and an uncommon that are ETB. And then there's like the mythic that is attack, and then there's another mythic uh, that is uh, where is it? Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, connive. There's a there's an uncommon that's just a mana sink too. It's like three mana. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why didn't why doesn't that come up on a? Uh, uh, I think it's because it says such and such connives as opposed to yeah. connives, so it messed up the the search, right? Yeah. So it's like there's some that are ETB. There's a lot that are ETB. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, so it seems like it's not an aggressive mechanic, right? The aggressive mechanics typically are the ones that are, um, uh, that are like, when you attack, do the thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that you're going to get beaten down by Esper, but I could be wrong. Probably not. All, All right, right. Now, next up. Yep. We have the Maestros. This is Grixis which is blue, black, and red. And the mechanic for the Maestros is Casualty. It'll be formatted as Casualty with a number. Um, you sacrifice a creature with power equal to or greater than the number. And if you do, you copy the spell. So the Casualty is always going to be on a spell. And you can kind of think of the number the same way you would crewing, where it can be higher. It doesn't benefit you for going higher well maybe there's one or two cards that benefit you for going higher um but for the most part you just need to meet the condition so like if you casualty two you have to sacrifice a creature with uh power two or greater and then you're going to copy the spell mm -hmm. um i think this mechanic's pretty straightforward also right i think so i think that it lends itself to more trickiness than knife mm-hmm but yeah, like 
you know, what you're doing, how you pay the cost is pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, what kind of things can we do with this mechanic? So what are we going to look for in spoilers? Again, like the last one, stuff that is cheap. Yep. Stuff that, again, has the mechanic stapled on for no extra cost. Mm -hmm. So have you seen a uh, make disappear? Uh, yes. So it's one in the blue for an instant counter target spell unless it's controller place two. And it has casualty of one. Mm -hmm. um, this is quench with upside. Mm -hmm. And quench uh, held together uh, mono blue poopers for like the better part of like two standard seasons. Yep. And like this is the kind of card that like it just makes this card harder to be dead. Mm -hmm. Right? So, you know, if they go to cast their sweeper and they have seven mana, right, for their, and they go to play their full price Doomscar, you're just like, uh, make disappear and sack my creature. So, good luck. You just, you almost have a hard counter yep. for like one creature. So you traded one creature to save like four. Right. And you take that trade every time. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Right? And, like, this card is fine otherwise if you don't ever connect, uh, don't ever casualty, I'm sorry. Yep. So it is perfectly fine. And the, I think uh, those are the cards you want. Yeah. The one thing that popped into my mind when I was reading this mechanic was Magecraft. Mm -hmm. um, because Magecraft doesn't just care about you casting spells. It cares about you copying spells as well. Um, so I think... You know, if there's cards that are reasonably costed and have this, then, you know, getting extra triggers through Magecraft will be interesting also. So we're looking for things that would play well with, like, whatever the powerful Magecraft cards are. Uh, Sedgemore Witch actually plays really well with this because you're making bodies that you can then sack to the casualty. Um Wither Bloom Apprentice, you can drain your opponents out. Professor Onyx also drains people out. Um, and I know that, you know, casualty is a Grixis ability in this set, but there's a bunch of like powerful white cards too with Magecraft, Clever Lumamancer and Leon and Lightscribe, um, both have pretty powerful effects that, you know, benefit from cards being copied. Yeah. So I think that's reasonable. And if you notice a lot of the black ones have casualty of one mm -hmm. right which happens to work out really well with a pest token it does and you gain a life yeah uh also you have poppet stitcher which oh, makes a bunch yeah. of things that cost two yeah so i forgot about puppets i guess i uh okay so i guess this is right casual cake i guess could be like rewarded almost like as an additional cost to cast this spell so it's not yeah. like you can cast it, get See your trigger happens. from like pop it stitcher, yeah, and then copy. Right. You have to do it all in one motion, so you don't get to like make your token then sack it. Right. Is your token comes too late? You have to make the decision to copy before you make the decision before you uh, have that token. Yep. I mean that that might be a deck just pop it stitchers and Sedgemore witches. Yeah, I mean that was close to being a deck i think in standard before mm -hmm. right like this like a and card like make Delver. Di yeah and a card like make this just disappear like holds that kind of deck together yeah where you're like i just have to go shields down for maybe a turn mm -hmm. and then i'm fine or i can wait till turn five play my you know my uh, uh three drop and then have make disappear up Mm -hmm. And if you have any other creature, if you have a Delver, then you can protect your Poppet Stitcher or your Sedgemore Witch mm -hmm. by sacking your Delver. Yep. You get that power back from making tokens, and now you're off to the races. Yep. The one thing I will say about this mechanic is most of the spells are expensive. Right? Um. So the... Rares, uh, they have a, an X spell, a six mana spell, um, and then like you've got like a 
make a make a four three uh token mm-hmm. for five a casualty of two so you make two four threes for mm-hmm. five mana but you had to kill your two drop yeah like that's not great um like there's a uh a grim not a grim tutor uh diabolic tutor but mm-hmm. it's five mana yeah with casualty three like that's not enough this one it feels like they were like yeah we got to make sure these cost a lot. Like they've kind of baked the fact that you can get two of these into the cost. I, I mean, maybe we'll see the, um, it seems like they're doing spoilers a little bit weird this time around. Uh, we're getting mm-hmm. them like per family. So today we got all the Esper or the obscure spoilers and I don't know what we're getting tomorrow, but, um, oh, I, I think we're getting, uh, the Naya guys. Okay. So tomorrow because we might get the Naya guys. We've we've already started to see Naya guys. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's there's a good one. Okay. There's a spicy meatball. <laughs> um but I mean like the Obnixilisk that I am currently sitting in seems appropriately costed. Um I don't yes. I don't think that he's over costed at all. No. No 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 no. I mean, like I think Obnixilisk I think make disappear like those are competitively costed for standard. Yeah. Right. Where, um, you know, uh, like what is it? Rooftop nuisance. The, the frost, creature draw a card yeah. casualty one, like that is usually not a playable card. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't think that it, like the casualty makes it like puts it over the top. Right. Um, but so, we glossed over Obnixilis. We should take a second and give him his due. <laughs> so Obnixilis, the adversary, one black red for a three loyalty uh, Obnixilis planeswalker mm-hmm. with casualty X. Uh, you can sack a creature of power X and you get a token copy of Obnixilis, the adversary uh, that has loyalty equal to the power of the sacrificed creature. Yep. And it is non-legendary, so... So you can have Much like... Yeah, uh, this is a Hobo J situation. Or oh, the... Card's way better than Hobo J. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the... The, the Jace from... Uh, Zendikar Rising. Yeah. With Kicker. Mirror right? Mage. Yeah. Um, and then plus one, it's a Punisher mm-hmm. mechanic where your opponent either takes two or discards a card. Yep. Minus two, you make a 1-1 one, one devil. And then minus seven, target player draws seven and loses seven life. So, if you go like one drop creature, two drop creature, ob, eat one of those creatures. On turn three, your opponent either has, either has to discard two, gets either gets mind rotted, mm-hmm. takes four, or loses a card and loses two life. And heaven forbid it's, you know, something that either drew a card or discarded a card coming in or leaving. Oh, yeah. Like, like if you uh, burglar rat and then this, your opponent's just, like, down three cards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or, like, it's an eye twitch. Yeah. Yeah. Right, where it, like, Draws learn, it, like, yeah, where we have eye twitch, we have shambling gas. There's, like, an entire, like, black white deck built around the fact that yeah um that's pretty good mm-hmm. um so like i don't know you you have two planeswalkers that you plus twice mm-hmm. uh and they've either taken eight or lost probably two cards in four life yeah like you don't stay in a game too long no definitely not uh also you have the uh the sneaky, um, you have a seven power creature somehow, and you just feed it to Obnixilis. That's right. <laughs> yes, and that would infect like a Gristle Brand. <laughs> yes, I will Gristle Brand. Yeah. But you can also Gristle Brand your opponent. Yep. Uh, what, uh, what's your life total? Interesting. Excellent. Take seven. <laughs> uh, how, seven how you cards. Like that? <laughs> yeah. You're dead. It doesn't matter. You're dead now. Yeah. Um. 
So, like, this card is going to see play. It is that, like... Now that uh, Loris has been sent to the Shadow Realm... You can play three drops. Right? So, like, this and Mayhem Devil mm -hmm. are uh, good friends. Like, that's just the kind of deck this goes into. Yep. Right? Like, you sack a cat, and then you get uh, you get a food some other way, and then you're off to the races. Mm -hmm. Get your cat back, you have a blocker, blah, blah, blah. So I think this that one is going to see play, mm -hmm. but a lot of them it feels like they went safe. Yeah, I mean right? like we'll we, see once we get uh the Maestro's day. Yeah, have we not had that day yet? Mm -mm. Oh wow, this is just the random stuff that's come out. All right, yeah, we've only had one day, and the day, oh, yeah, the yeah, day yeah. was Obscura Day. Okay, so there could be more. Yep, because like a little chat is like a safe anticipate. Mm -hmm. Right now. The upside here, right, is we were talking about things that colors don't get to do. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of, like, blue sack outlets. No, we got a couple in um, cons with Exploit. And I guess yeah. in, uh, you know, in a, we block. were just at, well, we were just in Innistrad that had Exploit also. So there yeah. are a couple random, like, Exploit cards that let you sacrifice. But, yeah, other than that, blue doesn't sacrifice. Yeah, so you have... And, like, red also doesn't. Red usually steals the thing. Right. And then black has to come in and finish the job. Oh, that's, like, a whole nother thing that we could talk about, I guess, is, uh, like, threaten effects with sacrifice. I hadn't even thought about that. Steal yeah, your so opponent's like, thing and sack it to a casualty card. Uh, so, like, a card like Claim the Firstborn. Yep. Right, we've all been annihilated by that in red, black, sack. Mm -hmm. Right? But, like, you steal your opponent's creature... Then you cast Light em Up, which is a sorcery speed deal two to a creature or player with casualty two. So you like you steal their three drop, then you kill their one and their two. Yep. And their three because you stole it. Right. Yeah. And like a, that's not something that mono red gets to do. You have to be, have to be in black for that. So you have to be in black. And I mean, we sneakily have a blue red sack deck. Mm hmm. Right, where you can be stealing stuff with your red cards and then sacking them to your blue cards. Yeah, wild. Yeah. Wild times um, we live in. So, like, in Limited, this is going to be um, a mechanic that uh, will be really, really good if the threatened effect is cheap. Yeah, Kind of the other problem, though, is like this mechanic is built around copying spells. Mm -hmm. And I know, like, I think we've talked about it on the show a couple times lately. Um, my limited decks have been a little bit more spell heavy than they were traditionally. But normally, you don't want a limited deck with, you know, 10 spells in it. Like, they need to be creatures. Yeah. And this mechanic I don't think works super well on creatures. I don't think there's going to be many like actual creatures with casualty. No. No, I I agree. So like I could see where like casual you sack something and you get plus one plus one counters. Well equal to the, the ca casualty. Casualty copies things though. Does it always copy? I think so, yeah. Okay. I didn't know if it like always had to copy or if it could do something else. No, I but mean, if it's always copy. Even like Ob Nix where it's only like technically casualty, like it's still copying something. Yeah. Well, so we have like uh join the maestros, which is how you get around that, right? This is the solution that they came up with in Strixhaven, right? Where every like there are all these spells that made tokens. Yeah. Right. So join the maestros is that five mana Make a 4-3, casualty 2, mm -hmm. so make two 4-3s. Yeah. So it's just so a like token like, maker that... Yeah. yeah. But you're right, it's not it's not the greatest limited mechanic. Mm -hmm. Again, this is another one that is definitely not an aggressive mechanic, mm -hmm. just because like you're feeding your creatures to it. Right. Right? So like to like maximize this deck, you have to like have sacrifice fodder. There's gotta there's gonna have to be a uh like Doom Traveler type card or two. Yeah. 
to make something like this work. Mm -hmm. Now, um, like the last two mechanics, and I know I started doing this, and I th I think we should keep doing it, is talking about like how they fit into the limited environment. But I do want to mention that in one of the articles on uh, the, the Wizards website today, they were talking about color pairs in limited, not color families. Okay. So I believe like each of these families loses a color for its limited archetype, or at least is more, more supported in two colors than in three, huh. which kind of makes sense because like Obscura, that effect is more black and blue than it is white. So white would be a little bit less supported. Um, kind of the same with casualty. It's a little bit more of a black and red ability than a blue ability. Fair. It it would be weird if they went to uh all the uh trouble of making families. Uh and then uh they were like, Oh yeah, we're we're gonna just uh you well, know I mean it was the same way in cons though. Like there were two colors that were more supported than the third color, and then in dragons Fair. they lost the third color. Fair. So um, just keep in mind that, you know, you might not be hard three colors. And actually that's better for limited anyway, because you're not going to be hard three colors and limited. You're going to be two colors with a splash. Yeah. Um, also a fun, uh, a fun thing is Seagate storm color. Mm -hmm. It comes in and close. You copy your next spell. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then you can sacrifice it. Then you can sacrifice it because it costs two. Yeah. Right, and what's interesting is imagine you have two 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 power things. Mm -hmm. It lets you. It makes a copy of the original, which you then oh. should be able to sack. So you should be able to get four copies out of a single spell. That's cute. If that's the way it so, works, that's cute. I'm yeah. I'm, I think so. Like imagine on turn uh, four, mm -hmm. right? You already have a two drop. You play. I guess it has to be you'd have to have more mana. Never mind, because like the a lot more mana. Sorry, but like the you could like copy the the like thing that makes a uh, that makes a four three, mm -hmm. and then well no it doesn't work. Never mind, because right, it costs too much mana. But like you can get you should be able to get four copies out of something, which would be I don't know um, how. Usually, like, copying spells, like, if there's something that's interesting, like, just doing it more times is good. Or, like, if, you know, you shouldn't have two copies of a spell on the stack mm -hmm. for whatever reason, then, like, because something breaks. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's fine with two, but not with three. Like, think about, uh, oh, what is he called? Ah, dual caster mage, like the, yeah. the neoform combo, right? Yeah. Like, you have to have two copies. So maybe getting three or four copies of a spell with uh, will allow you to do something neat. Mm hmm So. But yeah, so. We, we will see. Oh, hey, it's your guys. Yeah, we got the Riveters. Uh, this is the Jund family. It's black, red, and green. And this one is an alternate casting cost. Um, so it's not like an ETB ability, like, um, the other was it Obscura was connive. That was mm -hmm. more or less an ETB ability, um, or an activated ability. And then the last one we talked about was casualty, which was a cast trigger. Um, this is an alternate casting cost, um, and it's called blitz. So when you cast a card for its bliss blitz cost, it gives the creature haste. And when the creature dies, you get to draw a card. So it puts both of those abilities onto that card. And then at the end of the turn, you're going to sacrifice it. Um, so it's kind of like it gives something ball lightning, basically, like where it's only around for a turn, it's hasty, and then it goes away. But it's letting you replace it by drawing a card when it dies. Um, I, was, I was thinking that it's like um, Dash. Kind of, but it doesn't. It doesn't go back to your hand. It, you sacrifice yeah. it. 
Um, and it is worth noting that you sacrifice it. So things that trigger like on sacrifice will trigger things that trigger on when a creature dies will trigger. Um, sometimes this stuff like exiles at the end of the turn or goes back to your hand. So this, this one's a little bit unique in that regard. And also I think we only, we've only seen one or two cards with the blitz ability so far, but they've been cheaper than the CMC on the card, like by a lot. So that's something we need to watch out for. Also, it's uh, it's weird that the cost would be cheaper when it also replaces itself. Yeah. So. But I mean, you're taking what presumably is like a good card, and it could be a land. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's, you know, there is some risk to you when you do it. Right. Um. So we've not gotten to the blitz, uh, the, the the Riveters part of spoiler season. We, so have we don't not, have a lot of cards. Yeah, I think to talk we only about. have like one or two, right? Yeah, we have uh, Jaxus the Troublemaker. Yeah. Um, that kind of is like blitz, kind of like Kiki Jiki. Yeah, kind of sorta. Um. So, uh, same kind of thing. Uh, the thing I really wanted was, like, uh, the blue-black rare uh, Umazawa from the last set. Like, all your creatures get Blitz. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, that's on the Commander card, though. Oh, of course it is. And it's also, like, super-duper safe. Yeah. Well, it's I like, mean, we'll see what we get. Like... We said about the last two mechanics, they're a little bit more like playing the long game controlly. This mechanic is not. This mechanic just yeah. wants to get your opponent dead and quickly. So this is definitely an aggressive mechanic. And like what kind of what kinds of cards are we looking for or what do we already have that, you know, might pair well with this mechanic? Um I mean if you wanna casualty something. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, right? that's like, true. It works pretty well with casualties. You you blitz, you get in your attack, then you casualty your um your creature that you brought in. You draw a card off of mm -hmm. it, sacrificing, and you draw um uh and then you get whatever effect twice from the from the spell. So mm -hmm. like that's pretty good. Yeah, you can also play all the same tricks that we used to play, like with Uro and Croxa, where you know, things that are going away, you can sacrifice to other stuff like casualty, but also like we have Dockside Chef and uh, Deadly Dispute Village Rates. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, swing in, attack, get get your whatever damage or triggers are going to happen and then, you know, turn it into a couple cards, maybe a treasure if you got a Deadly Dispute. Um, also, like, this is one of those mechanics that lets you get in when you shouldn't mm -hmm. in that uh you have a three four and they have a four three mm -hmm. right naturally you would just trade those right but because they're like oh it's going away anyway yeah i don't want to block and lose my creature right right so you get to get in your three damage when you wouldn't otherwise i mean you're actually then, up on that exchange if they block because you get to draw your card you do, um, but like, you know, you're gonna get your three damage in, and then get your value from sacking it to something, or right? yeah. using it to pay a cost. Yeah. When you normally wouldn't get that uh, kind of effect, mm -hmm. right? Um, Where normally they would like maybe block. Yeah, I did have two other thoughts for this mechanic. Um, okay. The first one's a little bit of a deep cut. I don't think it has seen a ton of play, uh, but Voldaren Bloodcaster. Makes a blood token when something dies, and then when you get a bunch of blood oh, tokens, yeah, yeah. it flips and turns your bloods into bats. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That might be kind of cool with this, because your stuff's always dying. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a bunch of, um, like, the cards that bring stuff back when they die. We have Malakir, Rebirth, Undying, Malice, and Feign Death. Oh, if, yeah. If the discount is steep enough, like if, you know, we have a six drop that has, you know, a two mana... Um, two mana blitz ability, whatever, 
you can just Malakir Rebirth and bring it back and then keep it permanently. You get to replace the Malakir Rebirth because the creature still dies, and then you get the creature for good. Yeah, where's the... Uh, um, where's, our, where's our guy that I just was talking about? Um, there you go. Jaxus, right? He's a 2-3. Mm-hmm. Blitz for one in the red, right? And then you, like, Malakir Rebirth it or flicker it. Mm-hmm. Right? Like a 2-3 that, like, did something is fine. Mm-hmm. Right? And, like, now this has, a, like, a wall of text, but I'm yeah. sure there's going to be, like, a one that, like, is a 5-5 five, five trample or something mm-hmm. for, like, 3 or 4. And then, like, oh, this is really worth me putting in the effort to get all of this stuff back. Right. Or to get this card back. Yeah, kind of the same tricks that um, you play with, like, Grief or, like, yeah, the exactly. In the evoke elementals exactly yeah. where you don't get to do this for free thank god right but you do get to do it for uh <laughs> on a the cheap. reasonable on the cheap exactly yep so and it just takes like you know one blitz cost that's like two to make a to make a four four mm-hmm. right like you're you're gonna do that all day you're like oh cool i get to just like on turn three, hit you for five, uh, draw a card, and bring this thing back. Yeah, especially, awesome. if, like I said, there's any sort of other synergies with, you know, creatures dying or enter the battlefield effects or whatever. Mm-hmm. It seems like it could be powerful. And it's in the right colors for it, too. I mean, yeah. green typically has a whole bunch of stuff that, you know, really cares about entering the battlefield. Red has a bunch of stuff that cares about attacking. Black has a bunch of stuff that cares about dying, so... Could yeah, no, I agree. So All what's right. the next one we got here? Unless you got something else to add about the Riveters. The I riveting Riveters. Don't think. Um, now we have... Uh, what is this? Cabar- Cab- Cabaretti? Cabaretti. Yep. That's Naya. Which, um, I know we're trying to like have these names stick. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to be very angry at oh maybe SCG won't do it because Cedric's gone. Um, at um, naming looking your at Cabaretti tokens. Yeah, no, no, it's Naya. Yeah, get out of here with <laughs> with this like unintelligible stuff. Yeah, like when they were like oh it's not Simic it's um, Quandrix. No, get out of here. with Yeah, that. no, it's Simic. It's Simic. Yeah. Stop. They had it figured out. Stop. Mm-hmm. All right. <clears throat> this mechanic is Alliance. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's whenever another creature ETBs, something happens. Yeah. Is it really weird that Naya doesn't ever get, like, an actual mechanic? It just gets something that those colors do? Like, Naya had, like, cares about four, four power. Yeah. Well, they're just like, we don't know what mechanic to give this. So we're just going to be like, um, cares about big, yeah. cares about lots of creatures. <laughs> Like it's just like we we don't know what to do. Yeah. We're just going to give you things entering the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, like they're going to want to attack, so they're going to want to put things in the battlefield. So yeah, yeah. Um. So this is fine. Mm-hmm. It's it's again one of those where it's like not a real mechanic. It's just like they took something that they could have just put on the card and slapped a keyword on it. Right. They called it something instead of it just being a keyword. Or instead it's of like a, yeah. a thing. Yeah, they're like, we'll make it a keyword as opposed to something. Or it's like, it is like a reminder word or whatever. But, like, there's no consistency. Yeah. It's like, connive does the same thing. You just have to meet a condition. Alliance is like, the condition is the same. And the thing changes. But it does wildly different things. It's like, yeah. oh, okay. I'm not a game designer, but do not like. Yeah. I mean, it, it's whatever. It is. Um, so as far as, you know, what we're looking for out of spoilers, because this is kind of a backwards mechanic where we care about a thing happening instead of what the effect is, it's really hard to look for specific cards. But there are some things that will play really well with this mechanic, um, namely token makers. Like Adeline from 
uh, was it Midnight Hunt she was in or Crimson Vow? That makes a 1-1 every turn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, that seems to play really well with, you know. Oh, whatever you attack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we also have Felidar Retreat. It makes a token whenever you play a land. The White Shrine makes a token every turn when you pay a mana. Uh, Wandering Emperor ticks down to make tokens. Den of the Bugbear makes tokens every turn or when, when it attacks. Um, all sorts of stuff that makes tokens. One thing that I thought was pretty cool was Fable of the Mirror Breaker because mm-hmm. it makes copies of things every turn. So you can copy yeah. your whatever cares about something entering the battlefield, get more triggers, more triggers, more triggers. Um, so like the a- Adeline, the, you know, mm-hmm. so it like triggers on attack, mm-hmm. right? So like Gala Greeters. So one of the green for a 1-1, one, one, mm-hmm. right? With a- Alliance, whatever, a non... So this is another, another, uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield, choose one of these three options that hasn't been chosen. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it, create a tapped treasure token, and you gain two life. Mm-hmm. Or you gain two life, right? So you play Adeline, and you your Gala Greeters becomes a 2-2. Mm-hmm. Then you attack. That makes a uh, treasure. To, that makes a creature, right? Yeah. Okay, do you want to gain two life or make a treasure now? Mm-hmm. Right, like you can just stack those up. Right. Or like, um, oh, what is it called? Uh, like raise the alarm. Mm-hmm. Right. Just make two tokens. You get two triggers. Yep. So you just to maximize this, you just want to be like making tokens. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, like we have a bunch of really good token makers right now. I just rattled off a whole bunch, but I mean, there's yeah. even more. Like Scoot Swarm makes infinite tokens the seeker's chariot makes tokens when it enters and when it attacks there's all sorts of stuff that makes tokens plus there's a whole bunch of stuff that makes tokens that's unplayable right now that nobody even remembers exists like that was kind of a yes. whole archetype that <laughs> like never saw any play in Kaldheim. but green white and Kaldheim Bang. about tokens i think so yeah which is why Zika's chariot copies tokens yeah um yeah, I think that it's hard because one, we don't have a ton of the cards, right. but it's all the same stuff. Like we want the we want those cards to be cheap, and it really comes down to like what the um what, what the, the thing is. specific alliance yeah payoff is for that given card. Yeah, right. Like the Gallic readers seems fine. Mm-hmm. It's like somewhere between um like. Uh, almost like in a Johnny's Pride Mate, yeah, and a uh, Prosperous Innkeeper. Prosperous Innkeeper, like where like usually you have to have you have a thing, and then Pride Mate comes in and triggers that, and then the next thing triggers uh, the gain the Soul Warden, and then your Pride Mate is where you're like this doesn't need a Soul Warden; it just needs you to play creatures. Right. It just doesn't stack as well with two Soul Wardens. Correct. Right. But, you know, it, it's that kind of like self, con- almost like a self contained pride bait. Mm hmm. Close to. Um, so, you want things that, like, uh, are going to pay you off. Uh, look, for, look for things that, like, increase power or give evasion. Yeah. Things right. that reward you. Like, you already want to go wide. That's this me- mechanic rewards you for going wide, having lots of creatures enter the battlefield. Um, so you're looking for things that also reward you for going wide. And one of the common ways that that happens is cards that like put counters on all your creatures or counters on like multiple mm-hmm. creatures, um, which kind of makes modify better. Like if you're caring about modified creatures and you have cards that, you know, or putting counters on all your creatures, like that might might be a synergy to look out for. And also something that plays really well with tokens is first day of class from Strixhaven. Oh yeah. Part of that uh yeah. the Chatterstorm combo. Yeah. And if we were like unsure if uh, Naya wanted to go ride the family head mm-hmm. Jetmir. Oh yeah, he wants you to go super wide. Super wide. <laughs> Right? It's like, if you have three creatures, they get a buff and a keyword. Yep. Six creatures, 
They get another another buff and another keyword. Nine creatures. <laughs> another buff and another, another keyword. Buff. You win the game. Yes. You just win the game at nine creatures. Yeah, there's no way but, you don't win that game. Yes. A hundred percent you have won the game. Yep. So um like just it it wants you to go wide. So make sure that the payoffs are rewarding you for going wide. But it is a little hard, right? Because this is a mechanic that you have to have A and B in the correct order, mm -hmm. right? You need your alliance card, then you need your token maker, right? Right. Your deck is kind of garbo if like your hand is four token makers and no alliance creature, no payoff, yeah. Right. Then you're and then like. On turn six, you start drawing your alliance creatures, and you're like, well, now I'm just playing, like, vanilla creatures. Right. Have no text, because like, you can't make use yeah. of them. So, like, that's difficult, and a, a current issue with Go Wide and Standard is Meat Hook Massacre. Definitely punishes you for going wide. Right. And Jet Mirror only buffs um, power, not toughness. Yeah. So, like, you've gone wide, and you've got, like, a bunch of, like, three ones, and your opponent's like, I'll spend three mana and just annihilate you. Yeah. Right? And there's also um, a ton of um, sweepers in the format, and we're getting another four mana sweeper in this set. Mm -hmm. So, getting Wrath of God with, like, eeny weeny downside. Yeah. So, like, this is going to be hard, I think, to, like, make work in standard. In limited, it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. It is, you know, this is another, like, not as aggressive as Blitz, but still a more aggressive. aggressive mechanic. Yeah, for sure. Right. Um, We got one family left. One left. Yeah. The, the Brokers. Yeah. So, what are the Brokers? They're banned. They're just banned. Bant. Let's let not brokers. <laughs> banned. Uh, this is a uh, green, white, and blue, right? And their mechanic is kind of cares about counters slash has a particular type of counter. Yeah. So th they get shield counters. What do shield counters do? Well, it's kind of somewhere between like totem armor and regeneration it's a counter that you put on a creature and if that creature is either dealt damage or would die instead of that happening you remove the counter so it's mm -hmm. kind of like an instance of regeneration or totem armor or whatever it basically saves your creature um the downside is that it also will be removed if your creature takes non-lethal damage which is kind of yeah, kind of weird. But is like there's one of their uncommons is like a two one first strike with a shield counter. It's a double strike, I think. Right? Double strike, yeah. yeah, double strike. Like that card's just like unblockable and limited, basically. Like it's just gonna it's going to eat one thing for sure. Yeah. Right, but like the, but it'll probably eat two things and live. Mm -hmm. Like that's just a beating. Mm -hmm. it's like, what what am I supposed to do with this? Why why do you hate me, Magic? <laughs> what, um, what did I do? I think that this is just a limited mechanic. Like I uh, think so. Unless you know we get cards that are absolutely bonkers, I don't see how you can build a shield counter deck. Um, the only thing I could think is, let's say you get like a white. Um, one or two mana creature that has shield mm -hmm. has a shield counter. Well, now like in Pioneer, the white uh, like auras decks, right? It gives you a place yeah. to put your counters or yeah. to put your auras. That's relatively safe. It's like a quasi boggle. Yeah, it's not like as good as a boggle, but it yeah. is like a two for one for them to kill it. And you also have, like, the ability to, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, like, protect it. Like, they mm -hmm. use a spell to take 
the counter off, mm-hmm. and then you're like, uh, you cast Karamitra's blessing, right? And now they wasted their second spell that you countered. Or you counter the first one and make them invest two more and hope they don't have two. Mm-hmm. So it does kind of give you a pseudo boggle to put things on, but I agree. And like the oftentimes the hey, how many different types of counters do I have mechanic doesn't translate to lim- uh, to constructed. Yeah, because it is based on you having a bunch of creatures with counters. Right, and that's not how constructed magic works. Correct. Right. There's too much removal, too many sweepers, and like the cards at the counters usually aren't objectively powerful enough. Yeah, it, this is kind of a bad example, but because this deck did see a little bit of play, but it's kind of like mutate, mm-hmm. where like it wasn't super. I mean, there were definitely mutate decks, and I may have played some mutate decks, but it wasn't super constructed viable, just because it relied on like everything going perfectly. And yeah. most of constructed magic aims to not have things go perfectly. To not let you do your thing. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to uh, just just hope that's going to be a thing. Yep. So again, there might be like a card or two that kind of like rises up. Like if you gave me like a two mana, I have I have a shield counter on me. Mm-hmm. Like I think that card could like find a home somewhere. Yeah, but there's nothing that you're going to build a deck around, though. No, it's going to, like... Yeah. Like I said, it'll slot into an existing deck yeah. that, you know, wants a boggle or something. It's not going to just be like, oh, well, here, I got to build my deck around this. It's like, no. Like, this is marginally better than the other thing I had in this spot. Yeah, like, I could see a spell that was, like, similar to Heroic Intervention. That just, oh, you like, think shield counters? Yeah, put a shield counter on your stuff. Yeah. That would that could work. Yeah. And maybe not your whole board, because that might be too good, because it just kind of sits around. But, like, you know, put a shield counter on, you know, three permanents or whatever. Yeah. So, I think that it is, it is fine. Again, this is... Probably not an aggressive. Um, no, I don't. Th- well, I don't know. Like, I, it, it could, could be. be because it's like quasi evasion. Like the first time, the first time they block, you're probably going to trade. Yeah. Or I mean, you wouldn't trade, but you'd lose your mm-hmm. your shield counter. Yeah, you're going to trade your shield counter. Like all the cards are kind of a built-in two for one. Yeah. If you can like trade, um. Right, if you can trade your counter for a card, mm-hmm. and then you have to trade your card for a card. Yeah. Right? And that sounds very attrition-y mm-hmm. long game to me. Yeah. Right? Now, granted, you get the like the three mana, two, one, double striker, and th- your game could end very quickly. <laughs> yeah, he's only looking to do one thing. Yeah, he's only attacking. Yeah. And just, like, chewing through their board. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't... I don't see this being a... It seems like there are two, like, aggressive families, Mm -hmm. and then three that are not super aggressive. Yeah. So... I agree. All right, real real quick. This is a hot-off-the-precious spoiler here. Oh, boy. Um, And this is for our, our Naya. Okay. Brazen Upstart. Okay. So it's Naya Colors for an Uncommon. Mm -hmm. It is an Elf Shaman. Mm -hmm. It is a 4-2. Okay. It has Vigilance, which doesn't do well on a 4-2. Right. But, oh, when it dies, I thought it was when it enters the battlefield. Okay, I'm less excited. Never mind. When it dies, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in a random order. I thought it was when it enters. Uh, I was like, oh my gosh, like you play this on three, you always find your Winota. Oh, yeah. But no, it has to die. Oh, that's good. Yeah, let's I take good. it all back. I take all my excitement back. We're not going to just be like getting getting Winotas on four every <laughs> single game. Okay. Not quite. Not quite. Okay. Okay. So now everyone knows not to get, get excited when they see the card. They're like, oh, wait. <laughs> 
Brian already got excited for me and then got sad. Um, so we got no more families, but one more mechanic. Oh, what is the last mechanic? Hideaway. Oh, yeah. Hideaway. Hiding, hiding away at the end of the show notes. So Hideaway is a returning mechanic. And they kind of just changed the way it worked pretty recently. They changed how it works in the rules. So okay. it's going to be Hideaway and then a number. Hideaway used mm-hmm. to be all the same number. But now it's Hideaway and then a number. And you're going to look at the top, whatever the number is, cards of your library. Exile one and put the rest on the bottom of your library. And then there's going to be some condition on the card. And when that condition is met, you cast it without paying its mana cost. Okay. That's it. That's it. Um, The thing thing that was also interesting is... um, So all the hideaway lands, Mm -hmm. they came into play tapped. Yep. So when they put hideaway in Modern Horizons 1... The creature entered the battlefield tapped. Because it was part of hideaway. Because everything yeah. else that had hideaway was tapped. Uh, the enchantment zone under the battlefield tapped. The, the, that's part of what they changed. Hideaway no longer makes something enter the battlefield tapped. Okay. And hideaway used to always be the same number. I think it was five. Um, it's no longer always five. Okay. Aren't all of these five? Mm, I don't know, are they? I don't know, because Scry falls down. Uh, mm, I don't know. I think we only have a couple cards with Hideaway so far, right? It's Watcher of Tomorrow is the... Uh, the one from Modern Horizons. The one from Modern Horizons. Um, yeah, there's the black one, and there was there was another one. Yeah, I think there was a green one. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know where it is. Yeah. The content they crave. <laughs> it's the end of the episode. Nobody's listening anymore anyway. Oh, man. Come on. We have some... Anthony's still listening. Hi, Anthony. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. And Brad's there. I'm sure Brad. Brad's sure like Brad's somewhere, here. somewhere driving to work. Like, thanks for not letting me fall asleep, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought there was. I thought there was <clears throat> another one, but yeah, I, there yeah. was a green one, a green artifact, I think. Yeah. So, it yeah. um fight rigging. Oh, it's in enchantment. Okay. But yeah, that has hideaway five also. Yeah. So. Uh, and that one's bonkers, right? Like, it just throws plus one, plus one counters on things. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Every turn. Um, so, if you're old like us, you may remember there was um, the most unpassable... What was the most unpassable card in Fate Reforged Draft? No, I don't know. I didn't play much of that limited format. Citadel Siege. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That card was nuts. Was too white, white, and it like put was it put two counters on, uh, uh, on a on a thing or just one? Oh, it put two. It put two counters each uh, turn at the beginning of combat, mm-hmm. right? And like that's just like unbeatable and limited. Yeah. Now, one counter is uh, not two. But it's also very difficult to beat. Like if it anyone also comes had down a, a turn earlier, is it only three mana? Yeah. Oh geez. <laughs> um, if anyone has had their opponent play uh, whatever the two mana enchantment that has landfall mm-hmm. that puts a plus one plus one counter on something. Yeah. From Kamigawa, like um, like that card's unbeatable. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is effectively the same thing. Right, like, and you don't have to hit landfall. You just like feed counters to things. Yeah, and it like casts the card for free. <laughs> yeah, is it like you gotta have a creature with seven power? Yeah, well, you're gonna get there though. You'll get there eventually, but you also don't have to, right? You could just be like every every uh, upkeep or whatever. You just like, all right, here, make something a little bit bigger, 
So, like, you end up with a, a board full of things that have one, maybe two counters on them. You're not trying to, like, pile it all on one thing. Right, but it's also not like this thing goes away when it pops, either. Fair. Like, it's Fair. still going to put counters on stuff after it meets its criteria. Yeah, so... It is weird that they don't go away. Mm -hmm. Right, like... It, just weird. But, yeah, like, that card's going to be, like, unbeatable. Yeah. I don't know. I think that you know whatever the other ones do, uh, like hideaways. Hideaways a fun mechanic, right? Like lets you play a sub game and, and lets you put an Emrakul into play <laughs> for no manas. I think the uh, the biggest issue is so the things that matter are how easy is it for me to hit the condition? Yeah, right. Am I going to just hit the condition because? Right. Or am I going to have to do work for it? Well, so, I like, mean, so far one, these have, like, fed themselves. Yeah, the black one, you're just going to hit the condition pretty quickly yeah. just because. Uh, right, you, you're you going to play spells, and you're going to mill a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the green one, right, again, you might just want to, like, focus on spreading them around, but you can just, like, turbo and hit the condition. Like, uh, Shell Dock Isle is a busted card in cube because you're playing 40 card decks and it's like, when you have 20 cards in either library, you can activate me. Yeah. So instead of having to play two-thirds of a game, you have to play half a game. Right. Right, and that's a that's much shorter. Mm -hmm. So, if if one of the conditions is, like, easy to hit, then it'll be uh, uh, one of them could just be super easy. Yep. So, so I don't know if it'll be as good as the lands, since the lands were just free. Yeah, you just put it in your deck because it made the color mana you needed. Yeah. But so, we'll see. With all that, I think we are caught up on all the family goings on. Yeah. In Streets of New Capenna. Yeah. I think the takeaway is is look for look for cards that are cheap and that have the ability kind of stapled on for free or cards gonna... that like are of a color that doesn't normally get that type of effect yeah are we introducing something new to a color is it aggressively costed and do you feel like the ability isn't properly added to the mana cost mm -hmm. like those are the things and that can even be something at like four mana like oh this is a fine four mana card even if it didn't have this ability and they just stuck the ability on it for some reason yep Another thing to think about, and this this goes for like any three color set, is these cards have to be more powerful than two color cards. Yes, because they're harder right? to cast. Because they're harder to cast, and so if the mana supports them, right, a lot of standard is going to be become three colors, mm -hmm. either hard three colors or more than likely like two colors in a splash. Mm -hmm. Right. So looking at older cards. Some, like, two-color cards are going to go up in value because you're like, well, I want to be Maestros, and there's this blue-black card that it will, is good but didn't really have a home before. Mm -hmm. But because of this rare and this uncommon that's Maestros, I want to be Grixis. Yep. And now that means I don't want to play the black-black card on two. I want to play the blue-black card yep. or the black-red card. So, I don't know, like, maybe that Expressive Iteration card will be good. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, prob might probably not. Home. <laughs> probably not. Seems, seems overrated. Yeah. But, yeah, so, like, you're going to have to, like, older cards that are two colors are going to shift in value. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, think about, like, Fleece Mainline. It was good before, but, like, it was just a staple in Abzan going forward. Mm -hmm. Right? Because, like, you know, it your mana it fed your mana right into um what is he called? Uh Abzan Charm and Siege Rhino. Yeah. Right? But you wouldn't play it, you wouldn't you wouldn't have ever played like a green green card in that slot. No. Right? There was your, your mana, your mana work. wouldn't have worked, yeah. Right. So like, oh gosh. What is his name? Uh Werewolf Pack Leader. Mm -hmm. Right? Like 
Werewolf Pack Leader is not going to fit well in the Naya deck. Right. Where, like, a, you know, where the Kessick uh, Wolf guy, the 2-2 the two -two that makes a mana one of the attacks, yeah. that's red-green, might fit better because it's going to be easier to cast for you. Mm -hmm. So that's just something to consider, that those cards are all going to kind of change their values. Yeah, it's a good thought. I hadn't thought about that. So, like, we're going to be incentivized, if mana permits, to play three-color decks. Mm -hmm. And the mana, right, we've got the, the flip lands mm -hmm. for the, the next... Yeah, we have the pathways for the next few months. And we have the, uh, all of the, like, I don't know, they're not slow lands, whatever they are. The, yeah, the, the ones from Innistrad. The Innistrad lands, right? So... Like, the mana there is good, plus we're going to have the Triomes. Yep. So, right, like, a mana base that is Triome, Flip Land, and then the Innistrad Lands is going to be able, is going to be more able to cast gold cards mm -hmm. than before. Right. And this is also probably going to hurt um, the Creature Lands. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right, because think about all the decks that played, like, Creature Lands, Mono Green, Mono White. Yeah. Uh, the black ones got played in like dirtly control decks, right? Because they would have just eventually their mana would work out. The blue one also. Can... Yeah. Well, now like you're gonna be like in a three color mana base a lot of times, and having a land that only makes one color is going to be the liability. Yes. Right. Or we're not gonna have like um, we had like at the end of that format, right? Battle for Zendikar and Khan's overlap. Yeah, they did mm -hmm. because of the the fetching yep. with the with the fetch lands, right? But like they had two color uh, dual uh, man lands, mm -hmm. sorry, creature lands, creature lands. Yes, and so like we don't, we're not going to have that. So those those lands are going to go down in value more than likely. Yep. So probably the colorless lands too. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever. Faceless what, Haven and Faceless Haven. Is it Crawling Barons? Oh, yeah, Crawling Barons. Yeah, that's going to go down. Yeah. And also there's, uh, what is this called? Depopulate? Mm, I don't so, know. So uh, it's, the, it's the Wrath of God. Two white, oh, white. okay. Each player that controls a multicolored creature draws a card, then destroy all creatures. Yeah. If you're playing mono white or mono green, you just let your opponent play Wrath of God in standard against you. Basically. Right, like, if it, there's a huge reason to not play mono white, mono green. Right. So, just keep that in mind. Right, that you're gonna have this is gonna have a big shakeup on how we evaluate standard cards. Mm -hmm. I agree. And and also, this is the the eighth set in standard, which is super weird to say. Yeah, that is strange. But then it rotates, right? right? It rotates in the summer. It rotates in the summer. Yeah. Which, again, super strange. Super weird. So, right, like, we're, we're in a weird time for magic, right? We have eight set standard. That's when you can do the most powerful stuff. That's when your mana is the best. That's also traditionally when, like, mono red is the best. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's something I was saying, like, uh, thinking was, uh, I was playing this, like, mono blue. Mm-hmm. Uh, like with Ascendant Spirit. And I was like, oh man, like Quench makes this deck like a million times better. And they're like, oh, here's Quench. Here's deck. Quench. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. So, like, yeah, on one hand, this is when your mono colored decks are their best because you get eight sets of random commons that right. were supposed to hold together a draft archetype in standard. Mm -hmm. But then they're like, here's the populate. Don't play mono colored decks. <laughs> And it's like, hmm, I see. Yeah. I see what you're doing there. You can come play monocolored so, decks in a uh, standard popper. They, hey, I did. Yeah. Good times. My mana was perfect. <laughs> All swamps. Yep. Never miss that second color. Never. Not one time. All right. So with that, I think we got a show. I also think we have a show. So if you want to get at us, uh, you can find all of our social media stuff uh, in the description. I will shout out, um, get on our Discord. 
it was really helpful um, during the tournament. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you're looking to, like, perhaps participate in one of these tournaments, getting in the Discord, you're going to get our uh, first unfettered thoughts of uh, <laughs> the of the spoilers. Yep. And it'll make your life way easier when you uh, participate in the tournament. So I agree. Get in Discord. Extra special shout out for Discord. Yep. Yep, it's awesome. Bunch of cool people hanging out in there. Lots of good information. Lots of people willing to lend a hand, and you get the added benefit of our tournaments. Um, if you're going to run in the tournaments, I would definitely suggest joining the Discord. Um, I, I might even require you to join our Discord in the tournaments just because that's probably the best way to communicate if there's any issues or anything. So definitely join the Discord. Um, if you guys want to support the show, um, we would appreciate it if you use our TCG player affiliate link, tcg.casualtriardmtg.com. Uh, follow that link. Whatever you buy will help support the show. The, give us a cut of whatever you spend on that site. Um, if you want to support us a little bit more directly, you can do so at patreon.com slash casualtryhardmtg. Patrons get access to our show notes. They get access to more of us in our pre-show every week. And you get put on my mailing list, which I need to send out soon. Probably in the next couple of weeks, it'll be going out. Um, just as a kind of a thank you to our patrons, I usually send out some cool swag. So if you want to get on the list, if you want to support the show, we would really appreciate it. Chip a couple bucks in and help us out. You got anything else for this week or is that going to do it? I got one more quick thing. Okay, what do you talk about TCG? Yeah. Um, the We're getting into pioneer being a thing especially with the pro tour mm -hmm. if you're dragging your feet on like putting together your pioneer deck yeah don't like as soon as like big events start to happen cards are going to spike and as we've uh some of the like l uh sets that haven't been opened a lot mm -hmm. like uh D, D, yeah deadly dispute is like four dollars um it's a common oh uh, yeah what is the oh gosh the 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 opt variant that puts a card in your consider. graveyard consider yep those are like two or three dollars yep right so if you're dragging your feet like it's cards are only going to go up if there are five dollar commons in sets yeah, and four dollar commons that's wild right like if someone decides that like you know there is a uh there's a that, that lolf is going to be like a huge pioneer player mm-hmm Right, that card's gonna go up in value. Yeah. So like get in with like what deck you wanna play. Like the earlier the better. Mm -hmm. So just just a little PSA. Yep. And now with that, with that we'll catch you on the internet. We'll catch you on the internet. <laughs>